everyone. Welcome to our final round. <clears throat> we are once again on the draw. Sorry, on the play. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think we'll go ahead and make this work. Oh boy, all right. This hand is not, not as good as it originally appeared to be, but I guess we will take this opportunity. Jam a search. Cycles out of illumination, all right. Fountain. Uh, no. <clears throat> so that'll be a that'll be a good one here in a few turns, hopefully. Maybe even now, depending on what our opponent attempts to do. Their own search. So they could have a spell snare here, uh, but we can go ahead and. Getting ahead of myself. Let's crack this first. All right, so they have one, they have one mana available, so we're going to need a mana of our own here. Let's go ahead and shock this in. I choose this spell. We'll need to delve two. So unless they play main deck, this spell. All right, need a land. Um, that is not a land, however, mm, all right, so if we don't put this into our graveyard, <clears throat> we don't have a land, then they just play Jace or something like that, so I think we need to try and hit a land drop here, and we do. So, I guess we do this, play our own Jace, and take this advantage here to Brainstorm. Awesome. So we don't want Settle, and we don't want Path right in a second, but there we go. So now this does open up the opportunity for our opponent to play their own Jace. Oh, why thank you. Why thank you, opponent. Ah, they got the red. Okay. Alright, Jace goes down. Nope. They can't activate Colonnade this turn, so why don't we go ahead and so we need to fetch and shock to get it to Fairy in play. Um, but I guess we gotta do what we gotta do. Draw. So let me go ahead and pick our uh, pick up our mana leak here. We are pretty low though. Um, those uh, until we didn't before we knew our opponent was playing red. Those uh, shocks were definitely not free. But we do have a, uh, a pretty good onboard advantage as of right this second. So second to fairy. All right. So if our opponent does nothing, we can So do we want to? Yeah, I 
think we'll get rid of this right now. Grab a plane so we have a backup light source. And we'll go ahead and untap both of our islands here. So we're going to save this, save this Snapcaster. Uh, engineered explosives. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get that in there. <clears throat> so our opponent does have a lot of ways they can use to uh, kind of manage our arts fairy here, so to speak. But we'll just continue to, to put on the pressure if we can. I think we're going to Electrolyze and draw a card. Ugh, I'm not in love with that. So this mana leak doesn't doesn't counter it. Logic knot does. Mm. So if we not here, we still have enough to. Uh, two, three, four. Done. Alright, so we have enough, if they go for a Jace, we have enough to mana leak yet, so why don't we... Yeah. Alright. Land out of our deck here. Continue to draw with Teferi and pass the turn. So we'll do that this time just in case our opponent has any. Uh, is any nonsense? So if we can keep them off of a bolt on our Tefri this turn, okay. So they've got three mana. So if we One, two, three, cryptic command. They've got two blue up, three cryptic command. All right, I think we can do this. So we'll counter target spell and draw a card. Okay, there we go. Whew. All right. Um, let's bring in some, some tools here. We could play Detention Sphere, but we have Esper Charm to deal with that, so we'll get rid of our, our guy here. Uh, they might have some Angels of their own that they bring in. I'm not sure what all Just Guy is playing for threats these days. Unmoored Ego to take their Jaces? Ugh, I don't know. It doesn't seem... It doesn't seem great. Is it better than... Better than angels. I think I like the angels. I can bring in one of these, maybe. Maybe we don't need this many paths. I don't know. Probably go down another fatal push. Bring in another one of these. 
So I'm going to try and play a little, a little more quickly here. I also... I think I'm going to try and play around Blood Moon a little. Well, no, they don't run Blood Moon, right? plan here. Uh, no. Nope. We will hang on to that one and just uh, try and sculpt our hand a bit here over the next few turns. Nope. I guess we probably want to just fetch there, but uh, also no. That is a, <clears throat> that's a good one to have. Alright, so I don't, I don't think our opponent has Blood Moon in their deck. Based on the way this is going. Kind of want to hit a land, don't we? Hmm. Yeah, I think trying to get a land is more important than Snapcaster. I think the first, the first one of us that, uh, yep, the first one of us that manages to uh, start falling behind, behind on lands is going to be in, in a heap of trouble. One, two, three, four, five. That is our opponent. No. I mean, I know what I just said, but I'm going to try and use this to. Uh, get some cards out of our opponent's hand on their end step. And then I guess I'm going to try and slam this angel the following turn. Oh boy. I don't want them to draw that card if possible. Planeswalker, that's good. Here you go, chum. I'll let you figure that one out. Is this a cryptic command? Ooh, it is. Uh, all right, so this goes badly for us, how, if they path, we kind of want to land, we can untap, untap and jam a Jace. Yeah, I'm not crazy about that. We'll go for a, uh, a snap Esper charm on their end step, I think.
I think we're going to draw two cards. It's probably what we should have done with the first one, to be honest. Got another cryptic. Snap cryptic, yeah, that's pretty good for them. Starting to get that slippery slope feeling again. Nope. Need that one. Mm, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, unfortunately, we don't have enough mana to play the angel. And then also protect it. Helix, the Snapcaster, yep. I guess this doesn't feel great. <clears throat> but I don't think we can afford to take uh, a whole lot of a whole lot of superfluous damage here. No. So we transform this and they immediately blow it up, I guess. One, two, three, four, five. We can keep up the negate. Uh, they just have so much stuff over there, though. Sure. So let's see, we play this, they're going to do something, they play a Jace. We proceed to lose the game? Is that how that works? Let's find out. She's in. All right. Unfortunately, we are going to need to find an answer to this click here relatively quickly. Seems to be debating. Yep, okay. So we will definitely uh, take care of the click now with this. One card left in hand. We could fire up the colonnade. Uh, yeah, maybe we'll. One, two. 
Okay, so we don't have enough mana to fire up the colony, but we'll just do this. All this counter magic, really just need a planeswalker here. And we can try and press our advantage. Okay, not a planeswalker. Uh, so they have one card left in hand. No fields of ruin in play, so we're going to go ahead and activate Colonnade. If their last card in hand happens to be Path to Exile, I guess we uh, negate it. Okay, so it is most likely not Path to Exile. And we'll get a uh, yeah, water grave here just to keep our blue count nice and high. Ooh, there's a Teferi. Pretty confident we can get this to stick. Our opponent's got a logic knot here. Unfortunately for them, it is not going to resolve. At least as far as I know. Hmm? Maybe it's a Sphinx's revelation. I'd say uh, Sphinx's revelation is like the one card that's absent from this deck that I would really just like to see. So they have a negate of their own. We can respond with the spell snare. <laughs> Snapcaster. No. So, okay, yeah. Go ahead and draw. Draw into a land, that's nice. So we got a, uh, let's see, we have a, a swamp in our deck yet, and another, and a godless shrine. As fetchable targets yet here, so we're gonna go ahead, that probably has one card in hand again, so we're gonna go ahead and get them here. Uh, from both ends. Put the planeswalker. And we'll get the colonnade in there. Alright, we get to keep up the cryptic and the negate. So yeah, I think we're I think we're a strong favorite at this point. Okay. All right. So, a week, a fa fairly weak showing um, to that for the, for the deck. Um, feel like I I got so. All right. I was I reflected a bit more upon uh, the loss we had in game one to Grixis control and. Uh, Again, as you as you know on this channel, or maybe you don't, I like to have as much accountability as I possibly can. I like I want to own my mistakes when I make them. I don't want to throw my hands up in the air and say, "Oh, the world, the world hates me. I'm so unlucky." Da 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 da. Like that's not that's not my approach to to playing to playing Magic. You know, yes, there is some of that. There is some variance, and quite frankly, I feel like we drew like dog shit in that first game. Um, we didn't see a single cryptic command, I don't think, in, in either of the games. I have to go back 
and look to be sure. And we drew very little, very little counter magic. Um, kind of felt, kind of felt a little helpless. But I also, again, especially the first game. Like, don't get me wrong, the first game was awful. I made, I made a bunch of very small mistakes probably within the first few minutes of the match, just kind of uh, shaking the dust off and and trying to get my head back into the game, as well as um, just getting used to playing on this different on this different computer. Uh, threw me off a, l a little bit um, with this with the stops and the auto the auto yield keys and things like that that I didn't have set up like the same from my previous from my previous setup but uh, so unfortunately I think that first game unfortunately that was kind of a throwaway match uh, didn't really put up much of a fight there uh, and then I don't see so don't remember offhand what our what our second game was against again the, the mono white enchantments deck, deck well that just kind of just kind of was what it was. We got steamrollered um, by the by the three color burn deck, the the burn 2.0 or the neo burn, whatever we want to call that deck. Whatever the new the new emerging face of burn is going to be, um, that deck feels that deck feels really strong. Um, feels really really strong. Uh, again, I know I've mentioned it on this channel before. Red is just entering these these new kind of like unexplored territory of these strange like card advantage. Um, mechanics, and I think that they're getting close to kind of having a, a critical mass. Now, granted, they don't all go into the same deck. I don't. I don't think. Um, but when you see things like uh, Bedlam Reveler and uh, Cathartic Reunion and um, this new Light Up the Stage, uh, it really, it really, it really gives you pause. Oh, and of course, Faithless Looting. So all these, all these really powerful cards uh, that. that Red is really starting to to take advantage of here, here in modern. They they create for some some very very powerful decks. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to make any predictions or, or anything like that. But it, again, going up look staring down that burn deck. Even if I would have had a better hand, if I would have if I would have done the right thing in Mulligan and not just said oh well, I'll play my Baneslayer Angel on turn five. Yeah, that that didn't exactly pan out for us. Um, so if I had made an intelligent decision there. Uh, I, I mean, if I were to run this deck back right now, I think I would change at least one of these. One of these three would become a dispel, um, or maybe maybe the stroke, maybe disdainful stroke and a negate number to, number two here would become a dispel for sure. And if that deck really picks up and starts taking off, I think that you might need to consider one one timely reinforcements is certainly not going to cut it uh not 100 percent sure what i would cut in here maybe one of the searches i know they fulfill radically different roles but maybe just going down on one of the searches just to make the deck a little more uh a little more versatile out of the out of the main deck um maybe even the engineered explosives i don't know that, that that's also kind of a flex slot there but but yeah, that, de that deck's scary. Um, and then I think I'm not sure. To be, uh, once again, we know we know the, the the challenges I face in the in the control mirror. And so in the last in the last one, I mean, we just happened to land our our surge fresh Kanta and get our get one of our planeswalkers on online for like a turn there, and just kind of we're able to accrue a little bit of advantage and, and and pull ahead. So I'll I'll chalk that up to maybe maybe getting a little fortunate and. To more probably probably more more lucky than good in in that instance, but either way, so a two two three overall. Yeah, why can I not remember what that deck was? Uh, this is control mill. That's right. Oh my, I seem to have erased that one from my from my memory. But uh, again, the dispel would have helped there. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not really. Maybe the, actually probably the negate. The negate's better there, but if it was the stroke, I think the stroke is well. They both did the same thing, so yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, take it all the grain of salt. Just kind of my musings over over playing the deck. Overall, uh, there was the the mono white enchantments matchup. I'm not really even not really even counting, but uh, the two control. I feel as though Esper Esper preys on control decks fairly well, and so we we beat one and lost to one. Um, but other than that, we didn't really go up against any decks that this deck, I think, wants to see. Uh, because, of course, uh, as most control decks do, we we crush the other fair other fair decks in, in the format, for the most part. 
um, especially with the Esper again. Uh, the, the Black Splash really kind of sets us up well to, to square off against other control decks. Um, but let's face it, Modern is just not not the place where, where fair decks go to be successful, typically. Um, and so I'm hoping to showcase another deck in these same colors that takes a much more proactive approach um, to the format. It's a deck I've wanted to play for a very long time, and uh, with a with a recent reprinting has kind of made it possible and allowed me to justify uh, acquiring some of the some some new cards to play that deck. So stay tuned, and uh, and we'll and, and I'll have that a new a new deck for you here next uh, next week. Um, also in Esper colors, I believe, and. Uh, uh, I will see you then. I hope you liked. Hope you liked the content here. Sorry, it wasn't. Uh, like I said, I'm just kind of getting back into it. I did play that legacy, the, the some legacy last weekend um, down in Maryland. That was fun. Uh, definitely, I want to get. I want to definitely get more into that, into that format. I've got a couple legacy decks uh, kind of queued up and ready to go. Um, so it'll just be finding the time to, the time to squeeze those those in. They're also they're also uh, legacy leagues also like 50% more tickets than it is to enter these other ones. So I'm trying to, I want to see if I can somehow swing it so that I can get involved and, and uh, record the uh, community legacy league that they host every week, which is a free legacy tournament on Wednesday nights. The only issue is that it begins at 8 30 PM Eastern time. And so theoretically, you know, you're up till midnight playing magic and well, it's, I get, I get up at 4.30 every morning, and so that's, uh, eh, unless I can maybe, like, swing it where I just kind of offset my shift that day a little by, by a couple hours, or if I, um, like, work 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 some extra hours on the other days of the week or something. I'd have to do some finagling and and whatever to try and to try and make that work to fit my schedule, but I would love to start playing in that, because, uh, again, it's free, and they do have prizes. It is sponsored sponsored by uh, Card Card Hoarder. So uh, shout out to Card Order for for uh, uh, hosting the uh, or not necessarily hosting but uh, for backing for backing that legacy event there because um, of course legacy is an awesome format and uh, since since Wizards doesn't really deem fit to support it too much anymore it's up to the it's up to the community you know to to, to take the that onto their shoulders and to to hold events like that and that's just what they did. Uh, last weekend down in down in Frederick, Maryland, at uh, Game Hunters. So there you go. If you're in the area, go ahead, check them out. They do Legacy every every uh, Sunday night at five. The guy was saying there. So uh, yeah, stop in, take a look, and uh, and see what it's all about. So all right, guys, that's it for this week. Um, thanks for watching, and like I said, we'll be back at you with another deck uh, next week, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, bye.